welcome back to the second part of the 9-11 guide, assuming you watched the first part about the air-cooled generations. Sometimes strongly disliked Porsche among many fans because of the controversial changes it brought with it. For once, the air-cooled engine is replaced with a water-cooled one. This was necessary because of the development cost would have been simply too high to further extract power and at the same time conform to emission regulations. The second change is the use of a new headlight design. In this, all necessary functions including the fog light, turning signal and the standard head beam are unified in one unit. This leads to a specially shaped housing and the a bit unfriendly nickname Spiegelei Porsche which can be translated to fried egg Porsche. Technology-wise the car was a further improvement over the 993 when it was put into production in 1997 with the front suspension taken over from the boxer and the rear one from the predecessor. The new water-cooled engine uses a different packaging in the cylinder head to incorporate a four-valve arrangement with a single injection unit per cylinder. The volume was initially 3.4 liter and in 2002 increased to 3.6 liter, which was good enough for 220 to 235 kilowatts. A new change in the design language was approached too, with a rather new interpretation of the classical design. The elephant in the room was already taken care of with the most noticeable change in the identifier of this generation. The car seems to have lost its rough edges and to be one flowing body. The front bumper incorporates still the two horizontal slots used since the 964, but with no oval smiling cutout. The wing mirrors are newly attached to the window triangle rather than on the door itself. On the rear, the rear lights were again separated and pushed to their individual corners. Similarly as for the 9 and 3, the S stereoids of the Carrera models borrowed the turbo clothes which was presented two years ahead in the year 2000. This means that they have the wider fenders, the front bumper with three distinguished air intakes and to the rear the tail lights are connected by a red cover. Another nice detail are the air outlets on the lower rear bumper. The same means to distinguish the turbo models from the S models apply as for the 9 and 3. Only the turbo has a fixed rear ring and air intakes on the rear fenders. Turbo still uses a twin turbocharger setup on the water-cooled engine to produce 308 kilowatts, and 330 kilowatts are available on the now unlimited S model presented in 2004. This generation also features a GT2 variant based on the turbo with the usual treatments of a fixed rear ring, more aggressive bumper design, suspension upgrades, and up to 355 kilowatts. However, the more important special car of this generation is the introduction of the first GT3 to run in the accordingly named FIA GT3 class. The car was already presented in 1999, so only two years since the 996 went into production. Even though the car has the same engine capacity with 3.6 liters, the engine block is completely unique. The GT3 and the turbo as well are using the more reliable and race-proven Metzger block. From the outside, the car is very modest with a similar front bumper as the standard Carrera with the addition of an air dam. The side skirts are drawn sharper and on the rear a nicely small looped wing is placed. The production barely lasted a year. However, in 2003 an updated version went into production with a small power-up of 15 kilowatts and small design changes. The most prominent change is that the rear ring is no longer looped, but placed on two stalks. In the same year and based on the same car, the first GT3 RS was presented. With respect to weight, the RS shaved down 152 kg by removing the last bit of comfort. The visual differences to the non-RS are the air outlets in front of the bonnet, and a black carbon fiber wing compared to the body colored one of the base car. They have ever so often colorful decals on the side, shouting out their names to help us to separate them from their tamer brothers.
Being introduced in 2000, introduced in 2004, the 997 was the first 911 fully produced in the new millennia. The design made a step backwards with the use of round headlights again. The technology on the other hand made a step forward with the introduction of Porsche's Active Suspension Management or short PSAM, the use of dual clutch transmission or as Porsche calls it PTK and the pricey option to have ceramic brake discs installed which can be identified by the use of the yellow brake calipers. Engine-wise this generation still uses a 3.6 liter engine for the base Carrera models with between 239 and 254 kilowatts and the version with a larger bore to increase the volume to 3.8 liters for the S models with between 261 and 283 kilowatts. The engine used after the facelift in 2008 incorporates for the first time direct injection to increase power and reduce emissions. The change to round headlights meant that the secondary light functions are placed back on the front bumper. The pre-facelift 997.1 uses a front bumper with an oval horizontal intake which is separated into three regions where the outer ones are again horizontally split as a take back to the predecessor. The rear remained very close to the 996 with the rear lights having a rounded edge. On the lower bumper a distinctive crease can be spotted and traced back till the front. The facelift in 2008 called 997.2 updated the appearance as well. The front bumper obtained three distinguished intakes where the outer ones form a connection to the secondary LED light unit. The most prominent and simplest way to tell the facelifts apart are the rear lights. The 997.2 doesn't use the rounded edge but has a broken edge instead and uses LED technology. Just as before, the 997 was available as standard Carrera as S model and with or without all wheel drive. The S model can be differentiated by the use of a four piped exhaust system instead of the symmetric oval ones on the base Carrera. However, it has to be taken care of this because the optional sport exhaust has also the same exhaust. Other than that, the S has red brake calipers unless the owner spec the optional ceramics with the yellow calipers. The all-wheel driven derivatives of the facelift feature a connecting red stripe between the rear lights. In 2006 the new king of the 997 lineup was presented with the turbo. At first using a 3.6 liter engine still with two turbochargers and after the facelift in 2009 an increased 3.8 liter engine together with variable geometry turbochargers which increased the output from 353 to 367 kilowatts and 390 kilowatts in the Turbo S. Unlike for the previous generation, the 997 Turbo doesn't have to share its clothes with its weaker siblings. The classical elements however remained. This includes the more opulent body, intakes on the rear fender and the double deck rear wing which is deployed automatically if needed or manually for style points. The front bumper has larger intakes and a smaller secondary light unit placed in it. Below the bumper a front splitter is attached either in black plastic or body colored. The rear features two exhaust tips which are surrounded by the rear fenders and are formed in a trapezoidal shape. On the side of the bumper are large air outlets placed. The facelift didn't change much of this appearance but can be separated by the before mentioned rear lights. This generation had several highlights throughout its life. For example the GT3 and GT3 RS in both pre and after facelift versions, which have the same basic features as the standard car. Whereas one should take special note to the different wing pillars between the sub-generations and the different decals on the RS models. In 2007 the range topping GT2 was unveiled again at the International Auto Show. Three years later the car got the RS treatment as well, based on the facelifted 997.2 platform. The RS shaved around 100 kg over the normal GT2 by the extensive use of reinforced plastics such as carbon fiber 
and proudly shows this with a bare carbon fiber hood. The engine also got taken care of by increasing power from 390 to 456 kilowatts. However, the car that made the most lasting impression in the automotive world at this time has to be the 997 GT3 RS 4.0 of 2011. The car is based on the 997.2 and uses an engine with an increased stroke to have a brake fuel volume of 4.0 liters, as the name suggests. The engine features a wide variety of race-derived components, such as a new connecting rod made from a titanium alloy, or a crankshaft that is directly taken over from the race car RSR. This accumulates to a power output of 367 kilowatts and one of the highest power per volume output for a naturally aspirated street engine at its time. The transfer from motorsport to road car also affected the suspension and exterior. The car uses a slightly different rear wing, front splitter and so-called canards at the front to increase the downforce produced to approximately 190 kg at its top speed of around 310 kph. This is a gain of around 20 kg over the normal 997.2 GT3 RS at this speed. The canards as well as the usually applied decals are painted in a silver shade and a good giveaway when spotting one of the 600 units produced. Even though, the call Even though the calling number made a step backwards from 997 to 991 when the car went into production in 2011, the car itself most certainly didn't. 90% of new parts were developed and new technologies introduced. The car's chassis is made from a mixture of aluminium and steel to reduce the weight even if it gained 100mm in wheelbase. The overall length, on the other hand, only increased by 56mm by shortening the overhangs. This generation has two very different phases split by the facelift in 2015 because the after facelift 991.2 is using a turbocharged engine for all models except of the GT3 ones. The pre-facelift 991 uses a 3.4 liter boxer engine with a power output of 257 kilowatts for the Carrera models and a 3.8 liter engine for all the other ones including the GT3. The GT3 RS and the Special Edition R are using a 4.0 liter engine which isn't the same as the one in the previously mentioned 997 GT3 RS 4.0 but is based on the 3.8 liter engine instead. After the facelift, all models are using the same 3.0 liter twin turbocharged boxer engine, which produces between 278 and 338 kilowatts. The different power output comes from the different combustion parameters and from the use of a larger compression wheel in the turbocharger for the more powerful engines. The 991.2 also incorporates the Porsche's active suspension management as a standard, whereas it was only an option before. With respect to the design, the 991.1 can be very simply be recognized by its rear end with the use of a narrow rear light design. The wing mirrors are again attached to the doors as it was done before the 996, and at the front a new slightly L-shaped secondary light unit is used, which is more integrated into the air intakes beneath. The air intake in the middle is usually slightly trapezoidal, usually because the GTS has a middle intake that takes inspiration of the one used for the GT3 with its two dividers placed within. Also, there is an option to use the sport design package, giving the non-GTS models a similar look and even the attachment of a ductile spoiler. The after facelift 991.2 can be recognized by the use of a much smaller LED light strip at the front, which forms a unity with the arch around the larger intakes. The middle intake is still trapezoidal, but turned upside down. At the rear, the change is more obvious with the change to two round tailpipes placed more centrally due to the change of the engine. To guide the air which passes the intercoolers to the outside, an air outlet is placed on the outer parts of the rear bumper. 
Another change is to more three-dimensionally sculptured rear lights. Pre- and post-facelift variants share the same trademarks when it comes to the all-wheel driven derivatives, which use a wider body and a luminous light strip that connects the rear lights. The S models have the classical 4 tailpipe exhaust for the 991.1 with the red standard brake calipers for both generations. The 991 was offered in the well-known body shapes, whereas the Targo has gone back to the use of a silver roll bar as used up to the 964 which makes it easy to recognize. The glass panel over the passengers doesn't have to be lifted manually, but is automatically done by a mechanical system to store it beneath the rear glass. I highly recommend to watch video of this marvelous engineering mechanism. In the 991.2 cycle, another variant saw the light of the day called the Carrera T. The T thereby stands for touring and represents a car pointed towards the more pure driving oriented customers. To satisfy them, the car incorporates different weight reducing measurements and a rear axle steering system as well as a manual transmission. Even if all 911 are turbocharged, there is only one Alpha 911 at the top of the food chain, the True Turbo. In both life cycles, a 3.8 liter engine is used with the known twin turbocharger setup, producing 391 kilowatts for the 991.1 and 436 kilowatt for the 991.2. However, this generation in particular has some neat features on board for the first time. For example, there is the introduction of the active rear axle steering or an active front air dam to modulate the aerodynamic properties together with the still active rear wing. The core DNA is still the same with the use of a wide body or the intakes on the rear fender. The 991.1 uses a similar front bumper design as the base models, but with a different secondary light unit which has a unique day running light. After the facelift, the front bumper becomes more aggressive and rectangular with two horizontal staked day running lights as a prominent indicator of the post facelift turbo. The 991.2 also has the ceramic brake disc with the yellow calipers as standard. At the rear, both cycles are pretty much identical with the four piped exhaust system and use of an integrated wing. To differentiate them anyway, one can notice the slightly more aggressive design and the already mentioned different sculptured rear lights. To call out the Turbo S model among them, one can have a look at the wheels because the S treatment includes center locked wheels as a standard. The number of special editions increased again and so the 991 generation features many interesting cars. For example the Turbo S exclusive based on the 991.2 or the GT3s. These GT3s were produced in both cycles as normal and RS versions and can be differentiated by their front bumper putting aside again the secondary and rear lights. The 991.1 is more friendly laughing, while the 991.2 is grim looking. The RS models feature a wide body with newly an air intake on the rear fender and the 991.2 introduced louvers over the front wheel arch to extract stuck high pressure air. Another honorable mention would be the Speedster, which is basically a 991.2 GT3 Touring without a roof. And most certainly the GT2 RS, which basically obliterated everything on track at its peak. However, the most memorable and sought after 991 has to be the 911R. The car was a response to the demand of enthusiasts who wanted to have a pure driving experience with a manual transmission. This is because all the models of the 991.1 generation only were available with the 7-speed PDK. So Porsche presented the R on the Geneva Auto Show in 2016. The car connected a 6-speed manual transmission to the 4.0-liter drivetrain of the GT3 RS, from which it also borrowed the suspension and wrapped it into the body style of the 991.1 GT3 without the rear wing. Instead, the car uses a small deployable rear spoiler. 
By using a magnesium roof, fenders made out of carbon fiber and use of technology from the GT3 RS, the car is around 50 kg lighter than the GT3 of its time. Many journalists praised the car for its character, but some customers ordered the one merely to gain fast money on it. Before the car even was produced, one could find private offers which quadrupled the initial price of around 250,000 euros. Not even Porsche was very keen on this behavior and introduced in 2015 the GT3, with the option of a manual gearbox and very similar performance numbers. This and the end of a hype led to the fall of the prices for the R to more appropriate levels. It has to be mentioned, however, that the cars have a very different feel to each other according to the lucky people who have driven them. At the current time, the first life cycle part of the 992 generation is coming to its prime. I'm already looking forward to what it will bring in the future and how the facelift will turn out. Anyway, Thank you very much for watching and feel free to share your favorite 911 of the water cooled generations. So, drive safely and have a nice day.